Hey guys, how you doing? Ron Zanut here. Well, it's been a little while since I brought you an update on the uh, SM8 Merlin uh, case, water-cooled with the uh, Gigabyte Z77X UP7 motherboard that's going in it. And uh, with the holidays, I really have not had any time, unfortunately, to spend building the uh, system. But now that the holidays are over and things are getting a little bit back to normal, I am ready to rock and roll. Um, so there is obviously some work to be done on uh, routing of the fans and connecting up the Aquero um, controllers. But before I do that, what I need to do is uh, check out the motherboard. I need to make sure that it is functioning right. And uh, what I want to do is fire it up and let's see some base quick overclocking on that motherboard and see how well it potentially can perform and make sure that it's running well before I start adding all these water blocks and everything to it and uh, cement it inside this uh, case. So uh, for now we're going to take a little detour from the case and the build and get into um, getting a processor on that uh, motherboard and uh, doing a quick bench top verification that everything's running well. So uh, let's uh, sit down with that. So for this motherboard, we're going to be installing an i7-3770K. And uh, if you've been watching my videos, the last video I did uh, in this Merlin SM8 case was an air-cooled build using a Fantex uh, CPU cooler and uh, a different i7-3770K. And that one, I was able to overclock on air. It wasn't that stable, but I got it up to 5. Um, I hit the 5 gigahertz club on that, that chip, so I'm hoping that this one uh, it does as well. And we'll see how well it actually does on this CPU cooler. Now, of course, you know, you're dealing with the silicone lottery, so you never know how well your chip's going to perform until you, until you actually give it a shot. Alright, so uh, got the uh, chip on there. It's a brand new chip out of the case, although I did touch the center with my finger. I'm not going to use any other cool cleaning. And I'm going to put some MX4 on it. I prefer to do the line method. All right. Next up is mounting of the cooler. And we'll see if it uh, this cooler interferes with any of these heat sinks around here. So uh, let me get it out. I won't bore you with the unboxing of that. Well, I am lucky enough uh, from our friends over at uh, Performance PCs and uh, Frozen CPU that they sent me some of these awesome uh, noise blocker e-loop fans and I'm going to put a B12P fan on this, on this uh, tower. So that's what you're going to get here and actually in order to do that I need to remove this fan so actually you know what I don't actually I will use the fan mounts pieces that they sent to add a second fan. So uh, let's do that. Alright next thing we're going to do is mount some RAM. Get some RAM on this puppy, and what better RAM to put on this system finally than some platinum, platinum dominator RAM? Yeah, baby. I already did an unboxing of this, so and you've probably seen it a million times anyway. But this is some really nice looking RAM. I just hope it performs real well on this setup. I can't wait. Let's see. Here's the the big trick. Will it fit in this one slot here? Better not give me any problems. And shoo -wee. Just makes it, baby. How do you like them apples? That's, how do you like That's pretty damn close. I would say just about an RCH. There's just about an RCH in between there.
We have RAM, we have CPU, we have CPU cooler. Now we need a uh, power supply and a graphics card and a display. So let's get a little bit of a test bench set up here. Now I know I can use the uh, the motherboard tray from the Case Labs SM8 as the test bench, but um, in order to do that, I got to bolt it down. And I'm only remember this is this air cooling is just for testing it. This is going to be a water cooled system, so I'm going to break out and use my trusty old high speed PC test bench, one of the first ones that I've uh, ever had. And I'm going to mount this on here temporarily so that we can uh, check out the motherboard. So, uh, yeah, that's the ticket. All right. Now let's get a power supply. All right, we're going to hook up the AX1200i. And the only thing we have plugged in there right now is the main power supply, 24 pin. And we have two 8 pin connections. power for a graphics card. And then we have our trusty little old, although I could run it right off the motherboard graphics, but I'm going to run it off of one of the PCIe slots here. Okay, all right, let's see what we get. We go to power it up. And we have something on the display. There we go. Let's get into the BIOS. Well, we have a successful boot. The RAM is recognized. We'll get into some um, some overclocking once I get the operating system loaded and uh, do a quick check on this. So we're looking good. All right, so we know that the uh, motherboard um, seems to be fine. The processor is recognized and all the RAMs recognized. Now what I want to do is load the operating system and see um, do some basic uh, tests and benchmarks and see if I can, on air, how high I can overclock this guy using that uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo um, before I put water blocks on it and we get it into the, uh, the Merlin SM8 case. But one of the things that I've never done, this motherboard has a feature. Uh, it has an M MSATA uh, on it right there. There's an MSATA port. So I've never used that before, uh, either in laptops or on a motherboard. So I'm going to install this Mushkin 60 gigabyte SSD uh, MSATA form onto the motherboard there, and that's what I'm going to load the operating system on. Now, one of the things to note is that um, that port on the motherboard uses a, a SATA 2 port. So that's a 3 gigabytes per second. Um, port, whereas this SSD right here supports 6 gigabytes per second, but we'll see how it does. I'll run some benchmarks on it, 
and we'll see uh, how well it performs and I'll compare that to a regular SSD and also a hard drive. So I'll connect those up to the system too so you'll see that. Alright, so let's, uh, I'll show you how this gets installed and uh, see if we can load uh, an operating system on it. Okay, I'm taking the uh, taking the SSD out of the uh, packaging. All right, we have here the uh, Mushkin 60 gigabyte SATA 3 capable solid state drive. And uh, there is a, a key on here on the circuit card. And I believe what this does is slides in here and then snaps down onto onto the uh, to the MSATA connector. So I am currently wiggling it down and snapping it right into place. So I believe uh, that is the extent of installation. Now what I'm going to do is... Uh, get my uh, Wins, Windows 7 64-bit OS on thumb drive, plug it in, and let's see how it gets configured on the motherboard if it just recognizes it just as a regular old SSD, just like any other drive. So let's have a look. So I'm going to be plugging my uh, USB thumb drive from my Windows 64 OS on it into to one of the USB ports there in the back. Let's take a look now at the BIOS. All right, we have the system booted up. Now I'm going to take a look and see um, the boot options. Uh, here we go. Oops. All right, so boot option one and two. So it shows the to boot off of the uh, USB, the Patriot memory stick I have installed in there. Hard drives, it recognizes both the, the USB and it recognizes the uh, Mushkin. So as basically as a drive. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually use the BIOS to boot off the USB. I mean use the pop-up menu when you boot up to select the USB to boot from. So I'm going to now change boot options to the to the Mushkin. We'll save this and then hit F12 to come up with the I believe it's F12 to come up with the the boot options on the uh, to select. There we go, and we're going to go off of the Patriot memory. It recognizes the uh, SSD. It's a 60 gig, but it looks like four gigabyte of it is not usable. All right, so now it's going to go through and load up uh, Windows. I won't uh, bore you with. Uh, all of that. Just a little detour. Be interesting. Just want to show you on the, uh, at least on this Mushkin, there's a little LED on the circuit card that basically is the disk activity LED. So uh, that's a that's a nice feature to have on uh, circuit card. So you can see uh, right on the circuitry if uh, there's some disk activity going on. And there we go. So nothing too exciting right now. Uh, I'm just going to load the driver CD so that I can get the uh, the Ethernet working. The driver's loaded, and uh, get to the internet to load the latest uh, Windows uh, service pack. Then we'll be downloading some uh, some benchmark uh, tools to uh, check out the speed of that uh, drive. And uh, actually, curious to see how much space is left right now. This is without a service pack. Alright, so Windows, out of 55.7 gig, we have 22.2. So we used up almost 40 gigs. So let's see with the service pack, how far, uh, how much more that eats up by adding a, so that's a fresh install onto a MSATA SSD, a 60 gigabyte drive. Um, now we're going to load up, like I said, uh, Windows Service Pack 1 and see how much that leaves. And we'll do some benchmarks and then uh, test out some other drives. 
All right, so we have Service Pack 1 downloaded, and um, it takes up 44 gigabytes of that, uh, of that MSATA SSD. So there's only 11, almost 12 gig left. And that is just raw Windows, no, uh, and just some drivers. There's no uh, antivirus software or anything else on here. So um, I'm thinking that uh, nowadays, if you would Service Pack 1, Windows 7, 64-bit, you got to get at least a 120 gigabyte um, SSD or hard drive for your operating system. 60 gig won't cut it a at all anymore. That's just not enough space. So I will be adding disk to this. But for now, um, let's see what kind of uh, benchmarks this does with uh, Crystal Disk Mark and ASSD. And I'll see what else we have uh, laying around to uh, bench, to uh, do some benchmarks with. All right, but uh, boy, that really chewed it up. I also got to load some antivirus software on here now too. All right, so now we're going to run some benchmarks on the Mushkin 60 gigabyte SSD MSATA. And then just to get an idea how well uh, it compares, we're also going to test uh, a uh, Intel 120 gigabyte SSD, the uh, five, one of the 510 series. And then we also have a uh, Western Digital Velociraptor. Uh, this guy here is, I don't know if you can see him, can't. This is a 600 gigabyte Western Digital Velociraptor drive. So we'll give that a, a check out and see how they all compare um, running off of the um, the uh, Intel controller from the Z77 chipset. All right, guys. So um, here's the question: Do I use the uh, M SATA as my main boot drive, and then uh, you know have a SSD and or standard hard disk as my uh, data drive? And, or do I go with my original plan of of uh, two Intel uh, 120 gig SSDs in RAID 0 with a uh, standard hard drive as a data disk? Uh, so I'm going to run some benchmarks just to see. I, mean, I figured that the uh, SSD on the motherboard would be about as fast as an SSD standalone. Um, but we'll find out uh, if that's true or not. And... Uh, That'll help me decide uh, which way to go. So stand by here. I've got a couple of uh, tests that I've run uh, using ASSD and Crystal Dismark. So uh, we'll take a look and see what kind of results there are, just to just to be able to see for ourselves exactly um, how fast these MSATA drives work, and uh, and is it even worth using that in combination with a uh, standard hard drive uh, as a cache and using uh, the SRT, the S Intel Smart Response Technology. So uh, let's take a look at the uh, benchmark results real quick and then uh, make a decision. All right, here are the results of uh, some of the uh, disk benchmarks on the uh, MSATA drive. Uh, down at the uh, bottom left, that's the ASSD benchmark with the sequential reads. Um, hitting 262 megabytes per second and 59 uh, megabytes per second in write. And then you also see results of uh, random 4K, 4K to 64 thirds and access time. So access time for that guy down to uh, 0.305 milliseconds for write and 0.194 for, uh, for reads with a score of 269. Now compare that to above it is the Intel RAID so the Intel 220 gig drives in RAID, you see that it's almost three times, um, yeah, almost three times for reads. You got 897 megabytes per second in reads, 381 in writes. And the score is a little bit more than twice, 587 overall. Um, down the bottom here, we have HD Tune. Uh, and you see over there the, the uh, minimum... Uh, Transfer time was 98 megabytes per second. The maximum was 220 with an average of 184 and 0.2 milliseconds access time. And it also lists the burst rate there. For the Intel, AS, the Intel uh, RAID, you have 810 for the minimum megabytes per second. Maximum was 907 in this 
average time was 865 with again also a 0.2 millisecond um, access time. So, uh, and then coming across here we have uh, ATTO and basically showing the same thing. I mean you see most of those bars averaging at about 250, 260 um, megabytes per second in writes and the way they test once you get over the 16k blocks they're all the reads are up there as well and underneath the um, for for the Intel RAID you see there that the uh, the green is the read time that that goes super fast so you can see that uh, we got almost at one point we got almost one gigabyte per second so but for the most part they were all up in the 800 to 900 range for um, for uh, reads and then the writes um, average at about 430, 429 megabytes per second. And then finally um, for crystal disk mark you've got uh, for the MSATA 263 in reads for the sequential and 79 for and megabytes per second for writes and then you see a couple other different uh, block tests that they run and then for the Intel basically it's twice that, uh, three times that, 921 for and reads for sequential and writes at 406, 512k blocks, 454 and 401 and then some of the random other ones down below that. So obviously uh, the MSATA drive is nice and uh, let's see how it compares to the Velociraptor but bottom line is I think it's obvious we're going to go with the uh, the Intel rate And for the Velociraptor, for ASSD, uh, a, although it's a 10,000 RPM drive, it, it uh, does well for hard drives. And it is connected to the 6 gigabytes per second port, but really it doesn't even come close to the uh, MSATA. It's 141 or 142 megabytes per second for reads, 136 for writes. Overall score 44 in ASSD. Uh, HD Tune, for HD Tune we had 86, 88 megabytes per second in transfer rate for the minimum max was 145 and an average 121 and 7.0 milliseconds access time over here for ATTO we had again 130 144 megabytes per second in writes and reads were 130 basically 130 131 and then finally we have um, crystal disk mark 151 megabytes per second in reads and 142 for writes so so Velociraptor is a fast hard drive, but doesn't compare to the uh, to the SSDs or the uh, M SATA SSD. So I think uh, it's safe to say the uh, Intel's are where it's at. So what I learned from this was that the M SATA SSD is is okay, but it's not as fast as a standard SSD. Now part of that I think, has to do with the fact that the uh, the M SATA uh, is also only a SATA 2 port. That 60 gig Mushkin actually is a SATA 3 SSD M SATA, but um, the setup on this motherboard is that it uses a SATA 2 port. So I lose performance right there, uh, even if that, you know, even if, so if, I can't really tell you if that Mushkin uh, 60 gig drive will work uh, as fast as one of these uh, standard. Uh, six gigabyte per second SSDs like the Intel. So I don't have that and on top of that uh, as you've seen 60 gig is not enough nowadays with uh, Windows 7 64 bit and Service Pack 10 and and putting on uh, just basic you know uh, antivirus and anti-malware all the basic stuff on there it leaves me about five gig left so uh, so if you're out there thinking about using uh, an SSD on your motherboard, I would recommend, you know, if you really want the performance, get one that uses uh, the true, um, you know, 6 gigabyte per second uh, port. The MSATA supports that. Uh, and number two, I would go with nothing less than 120 gig, or if you had to, I guess a 90 or an 80 or 100 if they have it. But I would recommend at least 120 gig MSATA to go on a motherboard. So I'm not going to use that as my basic boot drive. I was thinking about pairing it up with a with one of these hard drives and have the Velociraptor over there, but that uh, 
nothing's going to beat. I mean, if you look, you saw that I did run some of the benchmarks, and you know, obviously, their fast, their Velociraptor is a faster drive than a standard 7200 RPM drive. That's a 10,000 RPM drive, but um, bottom line is it's still nowhere near as fast as an SSD. So I'm not even going to mess with that. I'm, I was going to run some tests and configure it using that as the M SATA as a cache, but I'm not going to waste my time. I'm just going to go straight, and I decided to stick with the original plan, use the two Intel. 120 gig um, Cherry Stone 510 drives. I'm going to put them in RAID 0 and then I'm going to have the Velociraptor as a data drive. So uh, so that's the story on the hard disk and at least I know everything's functioning. I will uh, check on the bench here to make sure that uh, the RAID 0 configures fine for these guys and I'm going to have to load the OS onto those guys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start working to do that. And the next thing now also is um, I'm going to uh, put the uh, GTX 680s on this motherboard now. So basically I will have uh, a whole bench top set up of all the hardware before I start putting water blocks on the graphics cards and the motherboard to make sure everything is working just fine. Uh, I have not tried SLI yet on the motherboard so I'm going to need to do that. Um, so that's the next step is to uh, get the bench top here configured exactly how it's going to be in the case except without the water cooling blocks on them and being water cooled on air we'll have the two GTX 680s um, we will have those two uh, Intel um, 510 120 gig drives in RAID 0 and we'll have the uh, Velociraptor uh, 100, uh, 600 gigabyte drive over there as a data drive so once I got all that up and running and working uh, I am going to do a quick check to see how high I can get uh, this overclocked on air. And then it's time to strip everything down to put the water blocks on it. Alright, so let's get to uh, getting the drives configured the way I planned and some uh, 680s on that uh, motherboard. Alright, so finally I was able to mess around with some of the overclocking and with... Um, the core speed at 4.7, the multiplier 47, uh, we got a 4.7 overclock. The core voltage had to be adjusted to 1.272 and I uh, was able to get um, a solid 30 minutes uh, so far. I actually ran it a couple times, um, but uh, we passed. You can see right there and in the uh, details it actually shows the 4.7 overclock as well and on the temperatures using the uh, Evo the Hyper 212 Evo cooler the max temps on those cores was in the low 80s and that's at 4.7 and I did have to put a second fan I actually used the uh, um, the stock fan that came with the uh, Hyper 212 on the other side so I had two fans on it on one side I have an, uh, a noise blocker e-loop uh, P fan running at 2000 megahertz. Actually, it's running off the motherboard on uh, PWM, so whatever it needed, you could hear the fans ramp up. Uh, both of those fans are both uh, pulse width modulated fans, so they cranked it up, but uh, they were able to keep it cool with a 2.72 overclock on this i7-3770K. So now I'm going to see, I'm just going to play and see if I can at least get a 5. 0.0 gigahertz boot and maybe even have it uh, come up and able to show you on this motherboard on air at least just a booting 5.0 but uh, we'll see so uh, just some quick uh, overclocking to see how well this motherboard does with this chip on air um, it was either that I was going to uh, pull the uh, chip out of the uh, the ASRock OC formula motherboard uh, because that one I know I can get to five and actually do some things with but it too um, would get to a stable 4.7 so it just might be the nature of these chips and the luck of the draw but let's uh, let's have a quick tries it 5.0 boot see what settings I get well so far I've been able to get it to 4.9 I haven't cranked the voltage up over 1.4 
but right now at uh, 1.3 I've got it at 4.9 and so we're gonna see now let's see if I can get on the web if they'll load up alright temperatures running at idle 39, 40. But if I put any kind of load on it, forget it. So at least that's promising now with the features of this motherboard with the uh, the buttons on there to gear up and gear down. I think maybe we can uh, inch our way to 5 gigahertz. And uh, that would be awesome. So I think what I'm going to do now is um, check the other slots on the motherboard make sure that um, a second uh, video card will work on the other slot then it's time to start uh, putting uh, the water cooling pieces on these parts and we'll get them into the case alright guys I'm still uh, messing with the uh, this chip to see if I can get it to 5.0 at least to boot on and I'll mess with it later but I'm trying to get to uh, 5.0 now I'm able to get to 4.9. This is currently booted at 4.9. And let's show you that. So you should be able to see. I zoom in there. We're currently at 4.9 right now. So I got a 49 multiplier. I've got uh, 1.39 on the voltage there. Uh, so I've been trying to get it at 5.0 without going over 1.4 volts, and I guess I could do that, but I'm not going to try that. I'm going to I'm going to use the features of the motherboard. Uh, this Gigabyte Z77 UP7 allows you to, uh, with the manual gears on the uh, buttons on the motherboard, you can gear it up to uh, you know, basically, um, uh, you can mess with the bus speed and or the multiplier uh, by adjusting it in small increments, so or large increments. Now I'm going to go for 5.0 right now, and I'm going to show you where the buttons are. Right there, we have the gear up, and gear down. One set of the buttons is for messing with the multiplier, and the other one is for the base clock. I'm going to go here. And see if I can get this guy to 5.0 and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, gear it up you should see if the drivers loaded properly maybe we can do it well let's see if it's still loaded when I had it at 4.7 and I was messing with it it worked I'm gonna try to gear it up let's see here We're going for 5.0. There it is. I just hit it one time. We're currently at 5.0 with a 50 multiplier. Now I'm going to see if I can register this. Validate. Let me, uh, should I go for 5.1? Let's go for 5.1. And we got 5.1. All right, I'm going to go and see if I can validate this. And if I do, you will see a validation screen. Well, it locked up when I tried to when I tried to validate when I got greedy and went to 5.1. It locked up when I tried to validate it. So we're going to go back to 4.9, gear it up one. And uh, see if we can validate a 5.0. See what happens. Okay. 4.9. Going to go gear it up one. 
5.0. Okay, I geared it back up again. Let's see if I can validate this. Nope. Not quite. All right, so we're steady Eddie, and I've already exercised this using the uh, overclocking tool, so we're good with the 4.7 stable at 1.272. But to get to 5.0, even to boot, you got to go over 1.4. So I'm not going to do that right now under air. I think we'll see if we can tweak that and get it tweaked out under uh, underwater. So what I'm going to do now is to make sure that the uh, slot works. I have my other GTX 680 in the test bench right now. And I don't feel like pulling it out. So I'm going to move this graphics card over to, to the slot that the second one will go into to make sure that uh, it works fine and it boots. So um, I'll try that. And then I pretty much validated this motherboard is... Uh, functioning properly and and is overclocking pretty well all right we've got the video card in the other x16 slot and looks like she's coming up just fine we'll run the heaven benchmark on it just to make sure she's doing good all right so we'll check back I'll let you know how hot it got and what you'll see the final output of the uh, screen real quick when it comes up for the summary and the average frame rates max and min. All right, there you go. That's um, a quick shot at um, the frames per second. So average was 126.9. Minimum of 55, max 262, and you see there it is under, it's just 1920 by 1080, um, although uh, this is right out of the defaults, no tes tessellation was selected, everything else is as it comes right out of the box, or as the program runs stock. Alright, so we're looking, looking good. Alright guys, so now it's time to uh, start dressing these uh, fan cables. Um, I'm going to mount the Aquero here on this side of the uh, radiator with the fans and that's going to that's gonna look good. I might put a cover over it with the, uh, the five, carber, five, uh, five pin carver on it. But for now, i got to get all these cables here from the radiators dressed and connected to, um, to the fan ports right here. So I have uh, three fans coming from the front of the rad, three coming from the back, and then I have four from the top rad. So uh, I need to remove these guys, probably run them down along the back, and then break out some of the uh, orange um, cables. Actually, let me get them out. Okay, so to run the um, fan connections to the uh, ports on the Aquero fan controller, I've got four of them here. One's a PWM and the other three are standard. Um, I have from our friends at Performance PCs um, and BitPhoenix. I've got a bunch of these uh, BitPhoenix Alchemy um, three to one adapter cables. So I'm going to string the two sets of three from uh, this rad on two of these. And then I'll take three of the four from that radiator and then I have a, uh, a single connection one right here. This is just a uh, three pin um, connector that I'll be able to connect them up. Now these fans are all four pin so uh, I'm going to have to mod the uh, connector on the one end so that basically it'll be like this. I'll be breaking off one piece of it so that I can install four pin fans that are on there. So that is, um, that's the plan. I'm going to need to remove the radiators and dress the cables nicely behind it so you don't see any of that hanging down. And then uh, mount the uh, Aquero right here and then run the cables up to it 
in a nice orderly fashion along the uh, along the uh, chassis. So let's see what that uh, looks like. All right, so this is the side of the uh, 480 red. It's going to be in the top corner, so you won't see this. What I'm going to do is tie wrap the cables along this side that you don't see them. And then these are the clips that I had from the uh, previous mount when I had just the Bit Phoenix fans when I built the SM8 case for an air build. So I'm going to tie all those cables together, have them down out of the way, and uh, that should just keep them nice and neat. And then they're all grouped together in one spot so I can get the, uh, the Bit Phoenix Alchemy cable to connect here and then dress that down out of the way. All right, we've got the uh, fan cables all dressed nice and neatly and tied down out of the way. I've got the uh, Alchemy cable for the single single fan here. And then uh, the other three, since they were all together, this actually, these, this multiple, um, the three to one cable is actually in series. It starts out uh, at the one end, then a second cable connection and a third. So this actually would work great if it was uh, like a uh, e-loop or, or a uh, noise blocker style fan where it has the connector right at the edge um, so you can just power it up. But I have the cables all coming together. So really, uh, I don't have much distance between the last one and, the, uh, and where the fan controller is going to go. So I might have to use another one of these or an extension. So right now, though, I'm going to go ahead and get it mounted in there. You see how it is. And then we'll dress the cables and see where they come out. So I'm going to drop it in to the top. And we'll take a look. Now, because of all the cable lengths, I had to, um, I found it was better to bundle them up and put them out of the way since you won't see them. They'll be out of in the back side of the uh, case. And I have two three to one uh, Bit Phoenix Alchemy cables here. Uh, there are four fans on here, so I've got three going to uh, three of them. Uh, I mean, one of the Alchemy cables and then another one going to one of them and then tapping into the, the extension that was on the three. So then that brings me down to just one that I have to worry about. So now I'll go ahead and mount this up there. I was able to use, I have some of these clips, um, like the little ones that use a much bigger, that I bundled them up, put a tie wrap on, and put them out of the way. So, uh, so at least uh, now they're nice and neat, and all I have to deal with is this one cable going to the Aquero fan controller. That's it. And now I'm going to put that up there, and then I'm going to remove this and do the same kind of thing. I'll have the cables dressed back out of the way. Um, and then I will have an extension cable uh, from, the, uh, from these guys right here that will be able to connect to the Aquero. And, and then I'll mount the Aquero back on here once I remove this, get the cable stressed and ready to go. All right, so I'm going to put this in there, remove that one, and um, we'll get the cables dressed up. And then we'll mount the Aquero, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, on the blind side of the, uh, the triple rad, we have the uh, cables dressed out of the way, some clips, some tie wrap mounts. And then on the underside is where I have all of the cables bundled together. So the two three to one fan extensions are down here. And then they come out the side where they should be able to reach to the, um, to the controller, which, is, which I'll mount here and be able to plug these in. And so this will be mounted inside the side there. You will not see anything other than the cables coming up to the controller. So let me get them mounted and uh, we'll see how that looks. And uh, all we got to do is dress this guy. All right. All right, so we have the uh, radiators and the fans cabled up. You can see the one lone cable that uh, taps into all eight, I mean, sorry, the four fans from the top rad coming down behind and I can put it back out of the way and I'll do that after I cable up that uh, those power adjusts and it goes down along the back of the rad and comes up and all of these fans the six fans that are on the front rad are also dressed down along the back as I showed you before and they come out here and they connect into the uh, Aquero and to the three of the fan connections there and while I was at it right now, I actually went ahead and put on the, uh, the fittings, the right angle fittings that I need for the uh, 
uh, Quero controller to water cool that uh, that those chips on the on the controller so they don't get blazingly hot. All right, so that is the radiator for the that's the 480 rad and the 360 rad in the front uh, cabled up with the Aquaro uh, mounted and also the power just up in the top so next I uh, need to uh, read up on how the rest of the cabling goes for the Aquaros and then we'll start laying in the um, the motherboard uh, on the tray and start running the loop All right, so uh, on the bench top, I was able to uh, pretty much build and check out all of the component parts for the system. The uh, motherboard uh, works well and overclocks that 3700K. The volts are a little bit higher than I would like, um, but I can get the system running stable at 4.7 under air. I can boot it up at 4.9, and I can actually even uh, get it to 5.0, but um, I haven't tweaked it enough to try to get it so that I could validate it using CPU Z. So that was fun, but at least it shows how, how robust the motherboard is. Um, the GPU, the 680, I've used before, but I did check it out in uh, both of the slots that are going to be used. The other GTX 680 is the one that's on my test bench right now, so that one will come off and go in here. And, um, but I know that that one works and I know the slots work. Uh, we looked at MSATA. We looked at an MSATA drive and found that it's, uh, even though that card is capable of a 6 gigabit per second transfers, the motherboard MSATA port on the uh, UP7 is only for SATA 2 or 300 gig uh, 3 gigabytes per second. So that speed and also that the MSATA drive I had there was. Uh, a uh, 60 gigabyte, so it's too small. I mean, it had after I loaded the OS and some basic utilities, we were about five gig of space left. So I went to the uh, the the two Intel 510 SSDs, 120 gig each, so 240. Uh, th those two are in uh, RAID zero and uh, off the Z77 chipset on the motherboard, so they're working fine. And I even have a Velociraptor as a data drive that we checked out. So um, so yeah, so all the guts are good and uh, was able to use the uh, Cooler Master um, Hyper, was the Cooler Master 212 Plus, uh, the Evo version, to cool it under air and that seemed to be work fine, but I did need to put a second fan on it. So uh, one of the E-Loop um, B 12-P fans and the stock Cooler Master fan that came with it is what I actually used and I let the motherboard regulate how fast they needed to go so that worked as well. So really now uh, it's time to start um, water cooling those guys and get them in the case. Yep. So we got through mounting the fans, the fan grills, uh, dressing all of the fan cables, uh, using those uh, Bit Phoenix. Alchemy uh, 3 to 1 extensions in orange um, from our friends at Performance PCs and uh, got the Aquero uh, LT controller mounted there with the water block installed on it and uh, everything cabled up. The only thing you see are the 3 to 1 cables really that are, have uh, the four fans from the top rad and the six fans from the front 360 all uh, wired up and all those cables dressed neatly back out of the way and so uh, we're ready to uh, rock and roll with uh, mounting of the motherboard and all of the uh, the pumps and the pump top with the reservoir and getting ready to look at the uh, tubing so uh, I hope you did like the uh, this video I went through all of the testing on the bench with the Z77 UP7 and making sure that it was good to go and uh, I think uh, we're successfully ready to start water cooling all of those pieces and get them into uh, into the case so I hope you liked this video if you did please like and favorite and if you're so inclined please subscribe that's it for Ron's and Nut thanks for watching